Okay, everyone, I think we should start. Um, welcome everyone to the Qubit community meeting. It's March 9th, 9th of 2022. Um, first of all, we have the introduction round. Um, anyone who is first time attendee here can introduce himself to the community. This is your chance. Please go ahead. Okay. Then I think um, we can already go to the next topic, which is the agenda. Um, the first is just a heads up that recently Cupid 051 was released. Um, I'm not sure if anyone wants to say anything about that. Okay, so next one is Roman with AMD SEV. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, Vasily already mentioned it and he's also on the call, mentioned it already in the mailing list that a new discussion line popped up around AMD SEV. Just want to encourage people which are interested in confidential computing to have a look there. We're trying to figure out a little bit on how to make in AMD SCV accessible for users or confidential computers as a whole and happy about any additional opinions there. That was it already. Okay. Um, yeah, short agenda today. I'll give the community probably another minute, maybe someone wants to fill something in or um, add something to the upper floor. I know it's not been a minute, but as I don't see any activity, I think we should move on. Um, so we also don't have any pull requests that need attention at the moment. So I think we should just uh, go to the mailing list review, but let me share my window. One second. Oh, let me see. Everyone can see that okay. Maybe I'm going to go to the mini. Hi. Hey. Did you want to mention? I'm not sure who was there talking. Okay, so okay, so what I'm seeing at the moment is uh, that there is a, a mail from the um, uh, regarding the renaming of the eviction strategy non-option. I'm not sure if Antonio is in the call. Yeah. <coughs> Hi, Daniel. I'm I'm here. Hey, so I'm not sure if you want to just introduce the topic yourself somehow. Maybe. Yeah. Why Why not? Uh, so basically, uh, the the PR that you see in the email got merged, uh, I think, one, two weeks ago. Um, uh, basically, it's about something else, but introduced, uh, as a side effect, introduced this uh, non-option for the edition strategy. And yeah, I'm just having doubts if um, the name is actually, you know, spot on or it's, uh, it's misleading. Um, what non means uh, is basically the, the 
there is no actual strategy for eviction. So when the VMI gets evicted, uh, the pod gets deleted, uh, which means the VMI gets, uh, I mean, shuts down. And then according to the RAM strategy of the VM, um, the, the VM itself can be restarted or uh, not restarted anymore because maybe uh, the run strategy is uh, once, which means like uh, run to completion. Um, and that's why I chose the name non. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm having doubts if I should, I should rename it to something like shutdown, for example, or uh, don't know, I mean, yeah, I think it makes sense. It's it, shut down or power off sound like good candidates to really indicate what will go on if an eviction is happening. Otherwise, not. But um, as, yeah. I, as I say in the email, uh, shutdown might be incorrect in some cases, because, I mean, it depends on how you look at it, because um, the VMI will actually get shut down, uh, because, of course, the pod gets evicted. But if the run strategy is always, for example, then it will get recreated, uh, turning the whole thing into a reboot rather than a shutdown. But so I guess you think this is this is fine. I mean, um, it depends on what you have specified on the VM when you specify it. Uh, all in a run strategy of always, and they have an eviction strategy of power off. I think it's clear that it will come back. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, thank you for the feedback. Um, At least that's my, my opinion. Uh, yeah. And I also had issues with none because it looks like, okay, take no action when, evictions, when, when an eviction is happening and this is definitely not what's happening. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's why I had the doubts. I mean, yeah. internally we have some talks because, uh, I mean, it's not really, it doesn't really tell you what's going to happen. Because, <laughs> I mean, having a, you know, a developer bias and you know what's the default behavior, but someone that reads just none, uh, it's not really clear. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Maybe, I don't know if someone else has any other opinion. Um, if not now, just, you know, reply to the email so that we can reach some kind of consensus. Just going to um, probably um, put the link to the message again uh, about the non eviction strategy into the document. No, thank you. Yeah, but definitely shut down. I mean, it's uh, definitely more. Uh, suited from a UX, uh, you know, point of yeah, view at least. And power off may be too strong because we are not directly pulling the plug. So it's kind of, it's kind mm -hmm. of the, the OS can shut down normally. So, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. OK. So then we have a look whether we have something else here. Okay, um, I'm not sure if there is also something, a question about difference in disk clone and VM snapshot using volume snapshot. So I'm not sure if anyone has already had an idea on that or has already have had a look at that. I figured this is something for storage probably. Um, so let me just read it once more, but I think I can explain the difference. Is it um, big enough? Can you, can you read it there? Just uh, probably make it a little bit bigger for everyone. So yeah, so a pure disk snapshot requires the VM to be offline because it's really just copying the current state of the disk, and and uh, a disk clone. So the the one is an offline snapshot basically. Whereas the other one is an online snapshot where you're pausing the guest and you need 
where you're passing the disk by the guest agent, basically. But where they are coming together again or not would be a great question for storage people to explain in detail. I'm not sure if anyone from Search is uh, okay. Yeah, see, so, yeah, yeah. So a pure, pure CSI volume snapshot without the help of keyboard requires the VM just down. Otherwise, you're just snapping, you're snapshotting an inconsistent disk state, and that's not crash consistent. So there is a good chance that the VM then crashes afterwards. Whereas okay, the sorry. whereas uh, VM a Kubert driven VM snapshot is cooperating with the guest operating system and you get a crash consistent snapshot of the disks. Still not an application crash consistent snapshot, but an operating system crash consistent snapshot. Basically this means when you think about Linux, the Linux kernel is going, is going to not crash when you're unpausing or restoring that VM. It can just continue where it left, where it left off because the disks are in sync from its perspective, but Applications may not like this and be out of sense or something still. So this is independent of applications. Yeah. Whereas when you're just doing a CSI snapshot and you would do that on an online VM, you just, it basically just, I don't know, potentially stream through your disk or something. And and this is of course not necessarily the actual, st actual state in the guest because the Linux kernel has a cache. So you don't know if the disk state makes sense from a from a kernel perspective, which you're snapshotting. Does this explain I'm it? I guess. Sure I guess it does. I, I'm not sure if I can completely replicate that for the mail. I'm sorry, that's yeah. why I couldn't capture that right away. If you, if you want. yeah, I'll just. If you don't mind, maybe you can <laughs> probably explain it via mail. So yeah, that would be great. And I just pull in more people, which can correct me if I do some, something wrong. Yeah. Thank this you seems, for that. This seems to be another one of those emails which directly go to my spam folder. Does, I think others have this problem too. Yeah, I've seen that email. I, I haven't seen that email also. So maybe this uh, email address is somehow Suspicious anyway, the know. the question is leg legitimate, I would say. Yeah. Should I link this into the mailing list review, or did you find it already? I have it. Thanks. Okay, great. Uh, okay, these ones are already answered. Most of the meeting cancel meeting notes. Upgrade of remaining. Notes. Oh yeah, that's just combined. Okay. Um, and the mentioned POV looks also good. So I don't think we have any other illicit emails. So I think we can move over to the next topic. That would already be a bug scrub. Although I think that we already did a good bug scrub last week. But let's have a look still. couple of things here, please. Lots of feature dates, the CPU allocation ratio, that should be the, the topic here. Is relatively at the developer configuration start. So, I'm not sure if that all is relevant, but at least we have a complete configuration. OK, 
Okay. <clears throat> so I understand what he's saying here that this VM should get allocated for CPUs. And it's not doing that. Is, am I correct there or can anyone tell? At least what I'm guessing here. But I would like to it's probably it could be a little bit more specific what he's expecting. So I'm just going to triage needs more information. Information. Oh yeah, of course. It needs information, not needs more information. Okay. So next one. Let's see the test. Okay, this is in or CPUs we don't need to cover the cassette because I guess that is already a checkup. I think this is scheduled to main does not exist. One second, I'm going to open it. Qubit 055? Oh, interesting. I guess it's 035, right? Seems like the VM is going to fail state. Main does not exist. Could you paste the link in the chat? Yeah, sure. One second. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, I guess we have to ask for that needs the information and we have to ask for word handler and word launcher logs. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Also, the complete spec of the VM. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a Makes portion. Sense. That is just part, right? Okay. rather than close and unclimb disconnect. Okay, 
Okay. I'm going to post the link also. I'm not sure if you want to follow up on that. Yeah, so I've been in contact with the person on like with Tyler on oh. IPR, not on this issue. Okay. Where he also mentioned it. And I guess this is about having a transparent reconnect. So when his when the person when, when is creating when the user is creating a a proxy and connects with VNC, right now the behavior would be that if the connection close the WebSocket connection closes, the proxy just goes down. And would, which means that the VNC application normally closes too. So you would have to restart everything up front. But if you have a transparent restart, the VNC connection would still be connected to the proxy and the proxy would just maybe use a few frames or something before it reestablishes the connection and just, and the connection can just continue. I guess this is the main background of this. Doesn't that also depend on uh, which VNC server you're using? Because for example, IDP used um, uh, I don't remember exactly how it's called, but like X11 VNC something kind of keeps the the uh, session like uh, always open, like a number of so reset. We have the QEMO VNC server and it just keeps the session open. So when you lose the connection, reconnect, your VNC connect, con con your VNC client continues where it stopped. Okay. Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah, that was my question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So this would work, I guess. I'm not sure how much, or I'm not sure how the VNC clients are treating packet losses, but they may experience a few packet losses and should mostly be able to recover, I guess. Okay, so, so it makes sense. Uh, the request we can probably let Triage accept it, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, and you can probably write something like at least having an option to transparently reconnect sounds reasonable. Yeah. This is, this is new. Okay. Make it go on. Okay. Is this from our make for? Go all failed. Oh, he's using the go target. Okay. I didn't use that for quite some, some time. Yeah, it can be. But still, I would just ask on what commit probably he has experienced that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I guess that is leg, uh, that is legit, but so maybe um, this went away after another one or something. But yeah, I guess we don't have any validation for the go all target, so that could be yeah, that fails. I'm just trying it now. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a 
working, it is starting to freshly back up due to failure to install this e-limit policy. Okay. Oh, we didn't, didn't have an issue like this for quite some time. I wonder what version this is. Oh, it's, oh. The Unix is reported as enforcing. In this case, we have to install it. So it's legit. It seems to be legitimate that it's failing. Okay. The question is, why? It's okay. I think we do. Hmm. I don't see any versions. Maybe I might More, be do we see the Linux type? Oh, can you go up a little bit? There was a, oh. a stack trace or a lock trace at the last okay. line. We could a little bit up. Yeah, here. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you go to the, so if you go bit. right, so that we can read this line. Yeah, yeah the, the sad thing is that we can't somehow install a line break or something right yeah it's just uh, failed to Fail resolve type attributes i think the underlying i think the underlying operating system is missing the container t uh, policy i wonder how they manage to run kubernetes with the c linux enforced and it without container t no it's missing maybe it's just missing the same video module binary? This one? Or I'm unsure. Maybe yeah. Antonio is yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. As, as well as the module failed. So oh, no, we we'll probably sure just called this. And, okay. So this may also just be the output of SE, SE module, right? That it's missing yeah. this attribute. Yeah. Um, Antonio, you can be right. Maybe you want to follow up on this? Uh, that was Google. <laughs> I think it was. I think. Uh, Lubo was it? Okay, sorry. So Lubo, can I can I just um, I'll tag you on that? Do you want to follow up? Yeah, I can reply. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Dominic, okay, I guess I need to check how it's all. EMI pending and word launcher pot missing. Okay. So what happened? I have to wait for first consumer temporary port pod word launcher launch and data volume import successfully. Oh, okay. Temporary word launcher pod was killed. I found former virtual machine word launcher pod missing. VMI stuck in pending phase. Some running successfully and others stuck in pending phase. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If the VIT launcher pod doesn't seem to come up or something, we probably need virtual controller logs to see. Okay. Messages. So I think there is something, right? Would like to have the modified version status cannot be fulfilled on virtual machines. Okay, this may or may not be an issue. Yeah. We would need the VMI or VMI status, so like yeah, so the, the full VMI YAML with the status and oh, here it is, it seems. The spit side, right? Distribution instance. So let's see, um, spike domain. So let's scroll down to status conditions. Zero, three, one. Oh, that's, wait a minute. That, isn't that the node status? 
It seems to so me that need, we need. Sorry. It seems to me that the user is using some local storage. The the pit plop, pit plop uh, pod, which is the wait for first consumer, gets shuttled. Then we try to shuttle the underlying launcher, but maybe memory or something is missing there, so we can't shuttle it anymore there. Yeah, Can just we... wanted, did you even see the pod? It sounded to me like the pod as a whole is not there, but... Yeah, but only sometimes, if I understand correctly. So this sounds like... Ah, uh, you know what I guess is going on here? This is like, if there if there is wait for first customer, then we have this kind of workaround in place that we first start kind of a, a dummy pod which binds the volume to a node which is most likely suitable later on for the real pod so that we kind of ensure that we land on a yes node. exactly we are binding the volume to the node yeah is that what you meant yeah i call yeah, it flip flop because uh, yeah. i think ah, okay, we okay. use the yeah, yeah, yeah. you're completely bind. right you're completely right yeah. so but so... there should at least be a pod right I, I, if I understood that there are uh, VMIs that are coming up successfully and others oh, aren't. Okay. And then the pod yeah. is missing, if I understand correctly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like Lubu says. There, there's probably an issue with placing the bind pods to nodes due to the scheduling issues. Yeah, okay, this is so easier, I, yeah. I can at least try to accept it, probably. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe... I mean, okay. it may yeah. be fine. I mean, the implementation is really good, but it was only the only possibility, considering how wait for first customer works. OK. So what can we ask for to make sure or, or what, what was exactly going on there? Could we probably ask for some more logs or something? Or doesn't that make sense? Oh. Yeah, we can ask them to show all parts in the namespace. Yeah, okay. I don't think we see that so that we can see if the bind parts which Lubu mentioned are stuck because they can't be scaled. That would probably be helpful. Lugo? Yeah, but I actually I think the the launcher after the uh, bind pod is not scheduled. Mm, maybe we can get events for the for the pod and see why uh, the affinity is not meshed. I'm not sure. Can, can, so you're asking that we, that we probably get an output on the events of the of the um, yeah oh, yeah just the okay. uh, kubectl events just the all namespaces or something like this. Which data volume objects uh, give uh, any insight? Good question. If it's our pod then not. It, Lu, Lu, you said you think it's our pod which is not getting scheduled and we see the import and we saw the yes. import succeeding. So from a data volume perspective, I think the data volume is done. Like, I don't know, maybe they, they say to which node uh, bind the pod uh, was, uh, was scheduled and... Ah, the so yeah, I mean, we will see more when we get the events and the pod list. We should see more. Mm -hmm. Maybe it makes sense to to ask also ask for the data volume specification. I'm not sure. So that... probably it's more interesting the status. Then I don't know exactly what's information it's in in the status of the data volume. Maybe maybe it has something uh, insightful. But probably we could see the same thing from the events. I don't know. Okay. So I think that we should be good too. Okay. 
all the possible nurses and also add a list of events for all names necessary. Okay, so let's see what else is there. Uh, what about the launcher container? Um, okay. This seems like a Parmore issue to me. Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, so this kinds of error um, basically show up when the user is using up armor on the underlying oh. system. Okay. Similar to Selenox. Uh, of course. Um, so you are suggesting probably that we ask for whether up armor was was enabled, and um, so that we can make sure yeah. probably. If he can, probably, or if they can, they can disable app ammo and uh, see if the issue goes away so that we can, can see that. Yes. And can we please also follow up the link, the 4303? Of course. Let me see. OK, that's already closed. Permission denied. OK. But that is kind. I thought that the other thing was Ubuntu Kubernetes. But they are also mentioning this e Linux issue. I'm not exactly sure whether that is really related here. Yeah, I do see the coloration. So maybe we just need to ask uh, what's the underlying system and if they are using uh, some extended uh, security system uh, as a power model or something. Else. With App Armor, it should work, or I always thought, oh, sorry. An extended security system. So does that make sense or? Maybe also yeah, mention. Can also please... Yeah, go ahead. Yes. That's exactly what I was trying to suggest. Okay. Uh, to mention the app or or Yeah, the exactly. Underlying system. <laughs> Sorry. CVEs from Twistlock stands. What? What is Twistlock? So it's the issue it? that we are not using 117.8, or I'm not sure. I, I guess so. I guess so. That is, that is. Yeah. Uh, maybe just oh, ask if 
what he's trying to propose is that we update to 117.8. But did anyone, just curious, just anyone uh, uh, hear about Twist Talk somehow? Is that some? I don't know it. Okay. But maybe I just. Um, yeah, we probably have to check if we, I mean, we have to check if we're affected by this and if it has an influence for us. Yeah. Okay, so we have a bird cuddle command not working on our Mac. Darwin ARM 64, I guess that is because we don't have any monitors for those, right? Or right, we don't build ARM? those binaries. Yeah. Because we we we, uh, we don't have we just have some normal arm okay. I guess or or our arch sixty four right exactly yeah. I okay, guess so. in theory nothing is blocking us from building them but we just as Lou said we're just not doing it yeah yeah so I think this is a valid issue right so um, but we could of course suggest that if he has the time, he could probably update um, the code so that it also builds uh, is, Darwin ARM images. Is, or, uh, is this just the about code. setting the right Go Arch when building or? Actually, I think he's just complaining about that yeah. the architecture is not supported. Uh, the file is containing not strong, it's not containing uh, Do we need ah, to test okay, it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's probably just about. Sorry, Sue, I didn't get you. No. <laughs> Troubles here. Uh, do we need to test the binary, though? We normally don't. We just build them and assume that they're working. <laughs> <laughs> Because okay. we don't have an architecture for it. we have no machines for them. Just them. Yeah. So it's mostly about adding it to the list of command line tools we're already building. There is a Go architecture for it to use. Yeah. Should be easy to do. Maybe, maybe if he has time, uh, I'm not sure if I could, should ask for this, but in general, of course, if you, if you want something like that, he could probably fiddle around and try whether he um, finds something out himself and, and can build it somehow. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if, if we should just ask for it. Yeah, I mean, it would be, uh, or at least test it, help testing it. <laughs> <laughs> if it works.
Okay. I hope that this comment is not too snarky somehow. <laughs> Okay, so what work can we now make? That was the last one. This one is from Petter. Okay, and this one is already accepted. So I get, guess that we are through with our bug scrub. Great. I'm just going to refresh the list once again so that we see if every, every she has had a label somehow that we handled. And this looks good. So, okay. Um, I'm going to find the button, of course, stop sharing my screen and leave this opportunity for anyone if they want to mention something still or. Okay, then I'm happy to give everyone 10 minutes back from your precious time and uh, I guess we see us next week then. Thank you, Daniel, for leading. Thank you. Thanks for your attendance. Bye. Bye-bye.